Hi guys, and welcome to the next episode of the Bond Bug Project. I had been in two minds whether I was going to film this today, because I thought, oh, you've seen Men on the Bricks before, and you haven't, well, you wouldn't need to see it again. Because I thought it would just be a simple, take them off, check they're okay, put them back together. So, the parts for the master cylinder that appeared today, by the way, so that will be the next episode. But, the wheel cylinders... I've already not got enough of the repair kits for this, I'm going to have to go and see if I can get some more later. But this is the wheel cylinder off of the passenger side, rear. And unfortunately it wouldn't budge when I went to take it to bits. So this is actually stuck. So I just thought it's a fine chance to let you see that things haven't all gone to plan with the bond bug. Um, We'll try and get it to free off. I mean, this is all brand new components, so it should free off. But that's... Oh, there we go. That's turning now, look. So I'm hoping... There we go, look. It's came out. And a clatter of rust around the top of it. Let me get a better hold of it. So that's one side. Unfortunately, I didn't realise this when I worried about the bits. I thought, oh, it's a single cylinder, it'll be easy done. No, it's not. These brakes are dual cylinder. So I've only got one new kit. Unfortunately, it looks like I'll have to get another one. I did wonder if I would need a second one, because I thought, oh, it's probably good enough condition. The wheels were turning, no bother. Let's see if this one's the same. That one's a little bit easier. Oh, it's still pretty stuck. So it's to be fair, I don't know how much brakes were actually working on the bug when I took it a little run down my drive. So spin it, get it turning. That just helps it on its way out. So, if I'm thinking right, if we just give it a gentle push, maybe not that way, I'll try this on it. There it comes. The second one, not as rusty, but the seal's been the problem on it. So we'll have to go and do this as well. Bore wise, needs a clean, but workable. I'm pretty certain the other rear wheel cylinder will be exactly the same as this. So I'm going to go and remove it. I won't let you see me taking it off because you've seen me in the on the brakes earlier. Taking it off is pretty simple. I'm taking a lot of photos as well to make sure I know how to put this back together. But I've never seen wheel cylinders like this before. But that's not saying that the local garage won't have an old stock kit to repair them. So before I go over, I'm going to do my research, find out what kit does fit those brakes. In Garling, because I think it's Garling kits that are over there. And if there is a kit, I'll get it to repair this. And here's hoping I can get it back together. It'd be nice to hear that bug back in one piece again. So I'll go and take the back wheel cylinder off the other side and then I'll stick it on until it, it, you see it come into bits. Right, so after a little bit of a fight with it to get it to come loose, we have got the other wheel cylinder off. I'm just going to put this clips together because this is what holds the brakes on. And the other one I sat. And here, just keeping these together means that they don't go missing. Right, so the first thing I did with the other wheel cylinder, before I got started with it, these have a very, very flimsy little wee bleed nipple. So, I removed it, because I don't want to get it damaged. I mean, when I say little, it's tiny. Let's see if I can find a spanner that actually fits it. There's nothing there small enough. 
there's nothing in there small enough. Right, this is a 8, and that doesn't fit. Let's see what this one is. 8 again. Here's a little, little spanner. This is a quarter. So it's quarter. There we go. So what's that, quarter? I'm not too sure, but we'll put that up in there. So bleed nipples out. Tiny little thing. Now I'm not worried about turning it round to do the repair work on it because I know I'm not going to break that bleed nipple off. Right, turned round, straight in again with this. Now one of these pistons was moving because I know, tried it on the car and it, it was actually spinning. Other side isn't like, but still half the ball. So, peel that off. That's not that rusty this time. Is this the moving one? No, this is the seized one. Well, we've got a good one to start with. So, on with this again. I can't get a good, a good hold of that this time. For some reason, it doesn't want to grip a hold of this. But as good as it did last time. Oh, that's quite solid. That's came loose, which is no much use. We'll try the other side just now, because I might have to try and clamp it a different way to get into that one. So same again. And behind the rubber. These rubbers don't look bad anyway. I'm making sure I don't burst them with screwdriver. There's nothing wrong with that. This one does turn, as you can see. So, there's a fair chance all my braking's been coming through this one cylinder. So I'll just use this thing again to pull the cylinder out. It's not in nice condition at all. In fact, the rubber is totally knackered, I would have said. So that's another one out. Before I go any further, I just want to double check the numbers are the same. 990 Yeah, uh, oh, Okay, they're two different numbers. So just for argument's sake, I will put these bits in a different box to make sure that they don't get mixed up. Right. So it's back to this stubborn one. Let's see if we can get it to move this time. No. That is a seized one there. We'll move up a, a gear to the next. There we go, look. That was never going to work as a brake. Now before I can use the, the vice grips to get that out, I need to make sure it's going to turn no problem. Which thankfully it is now. But it does mean I'm going to change all the wheel cylinder seals on the back, so I need to get another set. Normally when you buy garland kits, which is what I've dealt with to date, you get a a pair. Lockhead though, you just seem to get one. There's that one. I think that rubber's totally solid. It is still rubber, but I'm not too convinced by it. So I think that'll be changed. Just for peace of mind more than anything. Put that one in there. 
that's that. How's the bow look in this one? Needs a clean. So that's that too. The next one's the front, which I'll have to do as well. I have got seals for it because I knew there was two cylinders and the kits only came as one seal, so I knew they were right. So I might go and jack the front of the bug up now and remove its cylinders and I'll bring these back again once I get them out. Right guys, um, I've gotten the front wheel cylinders off after a bit of a fight. They were an absolute nightmare to get out. Um, but I've got them off. And I have plenty of photos to show me how the brakes go back on and everything goes back together. So, oh, no. I don't need to do much, so that glove I'm sure will be okay for the time being. Right, we'll start with the seized one, which I think is that one. Now, before I do anything, that says 28, that says 28, so they're both the same, they can go in the same pail for parts. Um, we will get a bucket, or a container, for the parts first. Which I've got actually quite a few of those in the shed now, I just keep setting them in places that I don't recognise. Here we go. One was right behind me, and I walked past it. So we've got a container. This is seized one, did I say? Yeah, so we'll go for this one. Take off that. These I'll just put these back in after I took it off, just so I knew that they were there. Right. So I think this will go in the vise like that. Let's get this knocked off. Oh, lovely. Right, I'll just pull the rubber off the piston. Again, not bad condition. Inside there, not as nice looking at all. I'm not even going to attempt the little one. We'll just go for the bigger uh, pry bar. Wow, that's, that whole bit's a cylinder then. So there was no way that was going to come off. In fact, I'm going to stop and take a quick photo of that because that's the worst one I've seen. Once I find my stop button. Right guys, I got a photo of that master cylinder. Just because it's fine for me putting into what I've done with the bug. That is very tough. So that would never have worked. I don't even think this little vice grips will be enough to get it going. Try it this way, see if it'll It's coming out anyway. And as you can see there, it is totally covered in corrosion. And the seal is actually not too bad. <laughs> it's just the corrosion that's caused the problem there. So that into there. Inside it, a good clean, it'll be as good as new. So that can go into there. This one, get the bolts out of it again. Now this one does have the bleed nipple on it. So I'll have it to take off first. 7 sixteenths. Oh. Clamp it in the vise properly. There we go. At least that's one successfully come out. If I went to do the clutch as you'll have seen, well as you heard even, because I didn't film that bit, the bleed nipple just completely sheared off. Right, this one does move. So we know we're not going to be in a lot of struggle for it. I'm curious to see if it leaks though. Rubber's not in bad condition again. Nice and free. To the stage I don't even need to play around with. Doesn't look bad. Rubber does feel a little bit tough, but still good, I would have said. Inside it, cylinder's quite good condition. No corrosion or anything inside this one, which is perfect. All I'll do is I'll just stick that one like that. 
that way I know what one it came out of. With the double ones, I'm not really that worried. That one's, I've seen me doing that before. It just keeps me in, in the right when I rebuild them. So I've got the parts for this one. They're here. I just need to get another rebuild kit for the back of the bone bog. And then that's everything apart from the clutch will be here, ready to go. So yeah, a little episode on stripping down the brake wheel cylinders off the bone bog. And I guess I'll have to go and rebuild them in a minute after I have some lunch, because I think it's that time now. I'm going to see if I can get another rebuild kit, hopefully. If not, I'll have to order one and then I'll get everything apart from one rear brake rebuilt. But we'll see how it goes anyway. But thanks for watching this, guys. If you want to keep up to date with the latest on the Bond Bug, the Regal, the Super Robin, which is just outside that door, the Scimitar, the Kitten, when it starts, remember and hit the subscribe button. And if you want to keep up to date with every video that gets posted to the channel, hit the bell and you'll get notified when I post new videos to the channel. But I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you next time. Right guys, uh, back to the brake cylinders again. I'll lift this up a bit so you can just see me as well. Um, I went and got a kit. Again, I only had one of these kits because I thought it was... Um, did both sides until I realised they were a dual cylinder. Thankfully, the local garage had this. A new old stock lockhead brake cylinder kit. Sorry you can't read it. The camera's pointing me so I can see you this time. Um, so yeah... I'm going to be able to build this up today. So, first on my list, there's a little bit of rust in here, which I just want to get rid of. So I'm just going to use some fine sandpaper. And I'm not going into the piston with this. This is purely just to take off this rusty bit. Just so that it doesn't corrode into the cylinder anymore in the future. This is when I would really like my torch to be here, but unfortunately the torch went flat. So, for the moment, it's just going to be good old fashioned light above my head. That's looking better. Right. There's a little bit on that side I just want to notice just now. Now I've got the drill again set up with a scotch brake. I'm going to change that because I think that's seen the best of it. So, I've got a bit. That's totally knackered as well. Right, I just took over scotch brake, so it's here. And the scissors I had a second ago. So I'll just cut this into size again. So there we go. I think that back is flat. So I've got another battery over here. I can get it on and hopefully That looks a lot better. So that's one side. Oh crikey, that's a different thing altogether. I'll just do the other side again. I already have been through it with the old bit of sandpaper, but this is... It's like night and day using that one. That's just like new in there. You can just see the shine coming through it. So, what I'll do is I'll give it a quick blast of um, brake clean just to make sure there's no rubbish in it. And I'm just putting it on this rag since. nice and dry. It does evaporate nice and quick this stuff. So one rear cylinder. 
Now we need to, well, I can set this to the side because we don't need that for a minute now. So I'll get that out of my way and I will leave this cylinder just off camera. Now, next part is these, for they're all rusty and the that kind of look to them. Now, I had a lot of debate in earlier, thinking, will I reuse the old cylinders? And then I decided no. Are the old rubbers even, no cylinders. The biggest reason I didn't want to use them was this car. I've already got a challenge in mind for it. And I need it to be reliable. Also to change these if they went again is a absolute nightmare. So instead I'll just remove them all and replace them with a new set of wheel cylinder uh, rubbers. So that's that one out. That was a nightmare. It looked like it was upside down. How's this one look? Yeah, where's the other one? Just wanted to see how the rubbers look on this one. That rubber looked like it was upside down. I think it was. So that rubber was upside down. That's a new one. Right. So that's off. Now I need to get this spotlessly clean. And the way to do that is actually quite a lot of manual handling work kind of idea. I've seen wire brushes be used on these as well just to help get them cleaned up. I think we'll use a flat disc. I've got one of them somewhere up behind the camera. So one flat disc. This is just to get all this corrosion -y rubbish off of here because it is highly corroded. Can you, you can't quite see what I'm doing here, so I'll, I'll take it round to this side so you can see. Get my position again so I know where I'm starting from. bit of corrosion on it still but it's an absolute mile better than what it was so that's that all nicely clean no more corrosion but well is that about no it's black paint but no corrosion on a, the main bit. And the bigger way, best way to check that is to take the thing. If it'll go in like that, it's good. I didn't actually know it has a stop on this one. So that's working spot on. Right, so we'll just refurb both of them fast. No, we'll, no, we'll put one of them together. No, we won't. I'll change my mind again for the third time. I'll set that in there so it's safe and I know it's free. This one will get it to bits. And I'll give it a clean. And there's that one off. I mean, the rubber's quite good on them. But when you compare it to a a new one, the rubber's quite flat. 
and I don't want to chance that leaking. Also, even though they look really nice condition, the new ones look even better. So I'll, I won't chuck these, I'll keep them as spares, because you don't know, they might come in handy at some point. But I do think they're knackered. This one's not really needing much cleaning, but it looks like. So a little bit. You just want it nice and clean so that there's no rust on it. Wheel sonder, other side. Brilliant. Right, now we'll put the, the, the rubbers on it. I knew I'd get there in the end. Right. So, I'll start with the kit that's lying here, since it's here. I'm not going to destroy the boxes. I'll put the old rubbers into them. So, even comparing the rubbers actually on these. That's the old ones, this is the new ones. They're just miles better than new ones. No, definitely happy with putting new ones on it. And here's a new rubber compared to the old rubber. It's not easy to see there. One of them's definitely a more distinctive kick compared to the other one. So, I'll put the old one in there. This actually does say you need to use brake fluid to lubricate them. So I'll get on a pair of gloves. Now I've got some brake fluid here. And put this somewhere safe since we're using the lid. A pair of gloves. I've seen me do this without gloves, but then always afterwards I go, why is my hands so covered with dirt? And there's the answer. Right. So, this was our new seal. Give it a nice lube up. Ooh. Oh, that's a... Ah, there we go. Come on. Aha! Uh -huh. Beautiful! One cylinder on. Now it also does say to lube up the cylinder inside the brake fluid before you fit anything in it. So well, I'll give it a little lube up. There's that one on. So it's one cylinder on. Let's do the next one. So I'll just drop it into the fluid again. That onto there. These are by far some of the worst cylinders I've actually had to fit. They're quite... I don't know what they're like. It could be because my hands are so cold and slippery because of the brake fluid, but they're very tough. There's a the second one. So I've already lubed the cylinder up. 
Oh, that worked quick. That worked perfect. Right, now the new rubbers need to go on. And see, see how easy this is to do actually. Because I think it won't be the easiest to fit on. I've taken one out again, oh, just to see how. It was just a feeling from the way how tough they were to put the rubbers on. Now I'm going to be careful when I do this. I'm clamping the top bit, but not the rubber itself. There we go. That's that one on. So hopefully this will slot over the. It's quite a tough. In fact, it's 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 really tough to fit on. Now, although I'm using a screwdriver, I'm being very careful not to pierce the rubber. Oh well, that looks perfect. One half, and this is normally when I'd be celebrating going, yeah, yeah, that's it done. But not with this one. So we'll take that piston out again. We'll fit this rubber onto here, since it's a lot easier done. And back into the cylinder. That's it, both together. So they will sit like that and like that. It's quite tough, you know. Sitting perfect. One wheel cylinder together. Now, of course, there's one bit that's not on it yet. And that's that lovely thin little bleed nipple. That one. So, screw that in. And we know it's a quarter from earlier. So that's this little spanner. That's one, one refurbished. Quite happy with that, you know. That went a lot easier than I thought. Well, kind of. I don't want to trick myself saying it was too easy. So, I'll give my hands a quick wipe because I like these old fashioned boxes. It's one of my things I quite. Lo it's one of those uh, weird things. It's like, oh, it's a vintage box and you can just put the bits in it and then that's it. It's stored and it's safe. These seals do look totally knackered though, I would have said. And the more I've looked at them, the more I realise they're totally knackered. But we will put them in a here, all the same. That way, if I ever do need them, they're not, they weren't leaking, so that's one thing. But, peace of mind, I know that they do work. I probably will never use these. What I will probably end up doing is, if I ever need another set of rubbers, I will just buy a set of rubbers to fit it. But it also gives me the choice, if I can't get a set, but I can get individual seals, I can match them up to the seals that are out of these ones. So that's one done. I'll put this in the boot of the bug.
and I'll have to do the next one, which I've got the seal kit here for. But I won't do another video of fitting this one because you've seen me do it already. So I'll go and fit this up and then you can join me again when I do the front ones. I keep forgetting I've got a red button now. Right guys, it's the next day. Uh, unfortunately, I only had one kit yesterday. The other one appeared this morning, thankfully. So I can get the front brakes done now. The back ones are actually all back on the Regal. Regal? That's this one, sorry. Back on the bone bug. So back brakes are all back on, the drums are back together. I've just to adjust them up to get it to the right setting. So, I better put on a pair of gloves before I start. It does help a little bit. Instead of just getting my hands covered in brake fluidy, greasy, blacky rubbish. So, a pair of gloves. I've got the heater on again today because it actually snowed here last night. So it's even colder. Right, so we've got brake cylinder badly corroded on the inside. Thankfully, the torch, our head torch, is charged today, so here's hoping if I ping my torch in there, you can see the corrosion. Try and do this right. You can kind of see it anyway. You see the rust around the top of it. So, we'll go and try and get rid of that first. What I will do is clamp it in that way today and I will have to get something slightly thicker than the tool I was using yesterday. That being because it is a much larger cylinder. So that's not much use. You need something quite thick. Um, what have I got? Being a typical, whatever you wish, wish to call it, I do have a drawer full of mix and match parts that I've collected over the years. And that might just be the one that I need. That looks like it could work if it grabs a hold of the Unfortunately, far too smooth and it won't grab a hold. Although it does give my socket a nice polish up. That wasn't the intentions there though. So, let's try. What else have I got that might work as a driver? How about that? This would grab hold of it. Let's see what this does. So this is just a slot, slotted screw. Oh, kind of worked. Not what I'm wanting either though, because it's it's not getting the. It's just not getting the the spin that I'm needing it to get. What it could do. Is I'll try doubling it up with the thing I had yesterday, which will be still somewhere to hand. It's right below here. My job after I've done this brake cylinder is tidy up my shade, because I can't find anything. Oh, that looks spot on now. Well, there's a little bit of rust in this side of it. That's looking near enough perfect. Same as the last one, I'll use a screwdriver just to... I'm not going to score it, but just to get rid of some thick deposits that have built up on the inside. 
So that's it's looking a bit better. We'll give it one more spin. Oh. A bit came loose. Now that's looking a lot better. Now I'm, I'm using a screwdriver to scrape a bit off. But I have to tell you, it's not in the barrel, it's around the top edge. Where there's no sealing properties anyway. It's just a taper piece. And all I'm doing is taking that off so that less chance of causing any hassle in the future. Like I did yesterday, same with the sandpaper. It's not actually going into the bore. Just cleaning it up. That looks a hell of a lot better. So I'm just giving it a quick spray off camera with some brake cleaner. I'll get my cloth out again. So the same cloth I've been using to clean everything down. It does get into the end of its usable usage, this cloth. It will probably be bend for long. So we'll just get this into the cylinder. That's looking a lot better. There's still a few little bits that I'd just like to try and clean up if I can. I think I'll try the the uh, file just to try and get rid of the rust the best I can without going into the bore and damaging it. So all I'm doing is it's around the top edge where there's rust formed. That looks spot on. All nice and clean. I'm sure if I stand from here, yeah, you can see it's all spotless now. So, cylinder done. The piston, which, yeah, looks horrible. Let's get the rubber off of it first. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. I wonder if I can do this on the app. I know, I can't zoom in. I thought I might be able to zoom in on it and let you see better, but some things don't change. Right, so, little screwdriver, same again, into the back of the seal. Now I can already tell by how tough a seal is, it's going to be exactly the same as the back ones to get the new ones on. I'm just going to give this a quick clean. It doesn't look an old seal. But we are going to change it because the last thing we want is these failing once I've put the thing together. So, just to compare it, I'll get one of the new ones out. A little bit away from fitting it, of course, because we still have to clean the piston, but. It's good to just confirm all these bits are the same. So no, definitely worth changing it. If you have a look there, the new one's on that side and it's got a much bigger lip than the old one. So that makes me believe that would have failed before too long. So I'll put that out of the way. I'll put that back in its box for the moment. Same as yesterday, by the way. These are genuine lockhead brake parts. So, first job is to clean up this master, uh, this cylinder. So we'll do that the same as yesterday. We'll use the flap disc. I'll get rid of the brake fluid that's on it. That is terrible condition. So, this off. We'll need this again because we've got the other one to do. Knock this light off so it's got back knife for when we need it. Uh, 
this is quite a thick build up it's actually taking a little minute to get rid of it So that's a bit of it. I'll have to go over it quite a few times, I think, by the looks of this. See, this is a weird one, because girling parts are actually all chrome. The master cylinders in them, or the, cylinder, the pistons even in them, Never were problems. Usually, when you get the old ones, they're just very light fitting on them, if anything. But lockheads seem to be all steel. All I'm doing, you see, is going round with this flap disc, taking off all the rust, corrosion, to get it back to a nice clean cylinder, which is actually coming up nicely now. You'll see a massive difference when we do this. Of course, because this is a cylinder, or the piston even, I'm not tightening it very tight in the device. That's why I'm having to keep readjusting it and setting it up again. That's that bit. There's a little bit left. What I'll do is, I'm also going to give the bottom of the cylinder a quick... So the worst thing we want to do is have that bit all working, and then that rusts up and sticks it again. So, that's looking a lot better, as I'm sure you'll agree. Got a nice clean piston, what's that? A little bit there. It's amazing what you see on camera and then you go, oh! So, we'll look again. All looking good. In the moment of truth, obviously, when you do this, it should just drop in. It's still sticky, that one, surprisingly. So, I might do some... I think I can see what it's sticking on. There's a little black dot at the bottom of the barrel. In fact, it's the same... It's the same all the way around. So it's interesting, as much as we thought it was spotless, there's still a little line of rubbish just catching at the bottom. Look at the difference that made. Just drops straight in. That's what you want. Freeze anything, not a problem. Right. Let's get to re rebuilding one at least. And then, once I've done one, I'll go and build the one off camera and I'll stick them on the bog. And hopefully I'll, well, hopefully we'll sort the brakes. So, cylinder, rubbers, 
We don't need the brake fluid, brake clutch cleaner for a minute. Um, a little bit of brake fluid in the cap. Rubber, put it in it, get it nice and lubed up. And here'll be the struggle. And, oop, and it is a struggle. I thought it might be. Oh, this, this is going to be a struggle. Oh, that's it, it's on. That was an almighty struggle. So the new rubber's on, it's in place. Looking spot on. If I compare it to an old one, we'll take the other piston and let you see. There's the difference between old and new. The old one's near enough flush to the barrel, the new one's sitting proud. You see it better when I hold it up to my face. So there's the new one, and there's the old one. So, lube up a bit of the barrel, same as we did with the back ones. Going for my pinky to lubricate the inside, and I'm forgetting how big the bore is. I could have easily used any of my fingers. So, that's nice and lubed up. Whew. Definitely a good fitting rubber, this one. I will use something to just help me along getting it into place. Oh. That worked beautifully. Fantastic. I just want to make sure that rubber's not folded over on itself. So I'll just stick on my torch. It is quite tough, this one, but it is a bigger rubber, so that'll be why. Yeah, it's a lot better than the old worn out one. Right, next stage. We do on the seal. And of course, just edged on gently. That actually went on rather good. So that's a brand new seal kit on the front. And it's sitting the right way. And it's turning. And hopefully if we give it a little pull. It's working spot on as well. So that one. We will give. I think, what will we put in this one? Will we use this one for this? I think we will. So we'll put the brake on, yeah, onto that one. So that's not tight. I'll give it a little nip up with this. That's that, ready to go. So the next one is lying there, that's an old seal, I'll keep the old seals together, I'll put them in a box just so I know where they are, and what seals go with what. So I'll put this out the way, I'm going to go and build the next cylinder, put this off again, I'm going to go and build up the next cylinder, get on the bug, and that's one of the jobs done for today. Hopefully get the brakes all set up again. Um, I'll still have to rebuild the master cylinders, so you can for what's coming in the next episode. Um, and we'll see how it goes. 
But thanks for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed this little video on rebuilding the master cylinders, getting them all working and getting them back on the bug. And here's hoping that the brakes work a lot better now and it's one step closer to getting on the road. So thanks for watching, if you do want to keep up to date with the Bond bug, the Regal, the Supervan, the Kitten, the Super Robin, all these little projects. Remember and like the video, subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell button so you don't miss any video updates. And uh, yeah, we'll see what comes later this year. I know there's another project going to be coming soon. So, can't wait to see it. And I'm sure you guys will like it as well. So yeah, till next time guys, we'll see you again.